As we kick off hour number two here on Robin Hood Radio, uh, it is time for Willie Hallahan and Sporting a Cause. Sportingacause.com is the website that Willie has. Uh, he's got a also a, a blog on that website, but also a list of uh, events that come up that are all sports-related and that are all fundraisers in our area. And we check in with Willie every Sunday to see what's going on. Willie, uh, good morning. Good morning, Marshall. How are you doing? Uh, we are surviving, and uh, unlike most people, I uh, am looking forward to the heat wave. <laughs> <laughs> I am, too. It's uh, always nice to be on the golf course in, uh, in warm I, weather. I, I love you guys from Swassa. I really do, and I love Swassa and everything they do. I just wish that they would put down that uh, that twenty uh, 12 month a year surface so they could hold their ski jumps in the summer. <laughs> well, it's, it's in the works. Uh, a bit at a time, uh, baby steps, but... Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're aiming towards that day when uh, we can hold summer jumps. Oh, that would be Believe great. Believe it or not, it'll be, yeah, first the, the youngsters, you know, the 20, the 20 meter yeah. is, uh, is uh, on the docket to be upgraded to year round, and, and that's so the kids can train year round yeah. more than anything else. But they'll be able to hold meets in, uh, in summertime, though. Who would that be? I'd be great. I'd tell you, I'd be the first one there. I'd be, first, I'd be standing right by Dale Dale Jones and saying, hey, Dale, now this is what I call ski jumping. Yeah. So that's what Dale looks like without a parka on. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right, what's going on here? Well, um, as usual, we have a week of uh, a mixture of cancellations. Events have turned virtual or modified one way or the other and some postponements. Um, a couple of events I've talked about before. I'll just hit them lightly. Uh, through September 22nd, this has been going on for a while. It's, a, it's an open time for the Connecticut FKT Challenge. This is uh, uh, an ongoing event where you uh, run on as many of the Connecticut's trails as you can uh, over this time period, basically September. Um, and it benefits the Connecticut uh, Forest and Park Association. You can find the details on my website, and I also offer links to learn more about that. Uh, through the end of July, there's the Circadian Challenge. This is a virtual event where if you're a long-distance runner, um, you have the opportunity to run a half marathon in a specific time period, one either at night, do a night run or a daytime one. Uh, there's some kind of complicated uh, criteria there, but you, again, you can find them on my website. Um, uh, Saturday, July 25th is the Jug End Loop Ultra. This is another long-distance event. These are long-distance runners. Uh, it's virtual, but yet they're offering it at the site. It's at uh, Jug End Reservation. <clears throat> um, it sounds comp uh, a little complicated, but again, you can find uh, the details on my site. Uh, a a long-distance event is easier to run uh, safely than, say, a short race like a 5K. A 5K is only three miles. Um, and uh, you get a couple hundred people all bunched up, and you start and end fairly quickly. Uh, and, and so people are kind of packed together. That's why they've made those uh, events virtual. But in ultra events where you're, you're running a, a half marathon or a marathon or even a 50-mile race, everybody, the fewer people who do get into these kind of races uh, distance themselves fairly, almost immediately when they start running. And... <clears throat> um, July, I also, uh, next uh, Saturday, the Jane Lloyd Fund clam bake was supposed to happen. That uh, was postponed. They're, they're, they don't have finalized plans yet, but they plan to do something in, in late September. They're not prepared to say quite what that is or what the, the nature of it, but uh, they very much want to do something. Uh, they've lost so many of their fundraisers this, year, this season because of the pandemic. And next Sunday was supposed to be the Harlem Valley Rail Ride over in Millerton. That's a big deal. They get hundreds of riders all over the place. Um, and that was postponed uh, to uh, August 30th, and hopefully that won't be a problem. Uh, also, there are, there are three major events for next Sunday. That was one of them. The second one is the Junkyard Dogs Hilltopper Half Marathon, and they just decided to cancel that. They were, they were holding out hope as, as long as they could that they could pull that off. They decided to cancel it. And also next Sunday was supposed to be the Canaan Railroad Days five-mile run. Um, and that was canceled some time ago because Railroad Days itself was canceled. <clears throat> and um, that's the second uh, race that uh, of a five-race series that was to benefit the Northwest Connecticut YMCA. Uh, so the YMCA has been, has been hurt uh, substantially by, the, by the, um, the pandemic and the cancellation of events, and they have two or three more to go, but um, 
we'll see what happens. Uh, I think the operative word these days, Marshall, is just uncertainty. Yeah. Um, now, uh, there's a glimmer of hope out there in, in the sports-related fundraiser world because there are some golf tournaments that uh, are hoping to uh, pull off their events later in the season in s- September and even October. Uh, I think I have close to 80 tournaments, typically uh, golf tournaments, on my website, and most of them, most of them cancel. They just couldn't see any way to to pull it off. But there, there are a few um, that are going to try to do it. Uh, and of course, uh, it, things change by the day. Uh, uh, everybody reads the numbers, and uh, our governmental uh, bodies make decisions by the day on what we can and can't do. But at least for the time being, here are a few of the tournaments that plan to uh, hold their events. Uh, Unico, that's the, uh, it's a national organization, an Italian-American organization. They have a, uh, a branch in Torrington. They postponed, they had a, a, a tournament scheduled in May, I think it was, and they postponed it to October 5th uh, at the Torrington Country Club. And the uh, United Way of Northwest Connecticut, they combined last year with the Charlie Ormsby tournament to have a combined tournament. They they postponed theirs. They, this is the second time they postponed it this year. They hope to have it in September, also at the Torrington Country Club. Um, the Maple Brook School uh, hopes to have uh, a tournament over at Copake Country Club. They're, they're scheduled for September 21st. And over at Undermountain, uh, Ankrum Fire Company, Amenia Fire Company, and Swasa all hope to have tournaments in uh, September over at Undermountain, and uh, I talked to Trish MacArthur, who's uh, who runs Undermountain, uh, yesterday just to talk about how how things are going to look for golf tournaments this year and how different they're going to be, and they are going to be quite different. Uh, all with the understanding that you're trying to keep people apart, uh, keep them safe, and these are some of the the, the challenges that um, that uh, she has foreseen and and has addressed. Uh, registration, for example. Uh, typically at a golf tournament, everybody shows up within an hour of the tournament, and there's this mass at the registration tables, uh, either paying or registering or whatever. That's not going to happen. Uh, registration is all going to be done in advance, prepay, uh, no tournament day sign-ups. Uh, when people do arrive, uh, golfers, to the non-golfer, they might not understand that most golf tournaments these days are shotgun starts where instead of like on a pro event, everybody starts at the first hole and foursome after foursome goes off the first. At a, a tournament around here, they have what they call a shotgun start where groups go to different holes. So they're, they're, uh, there's a foursome at each tee, and they all start at the same time. So everybody's all over the course, and they all end up finishing pretty much at the same time. And uh, typically in a tournament, golfers will gather. Uh, they'll get their instructions, and then they'll go off one by one to their, their holes. Uh, now... Once you've arrived, you get your whole designation, you go right to your tee and wait until the, the uh, signal has, has been given to start. Um, typically, on a tournament, uh, lunch and dinner are involved. Uh, you, you sit down lunch and sit down dinner, not anymore. Uh, lunch will be a, a box lunch and it will be given to, to uh, participants as they make the turn by the clubhouse and they'll, they'll eat on, in their, their carts as they play. And dinner will be takeout. Um, typically, there's dinner awards and raffles and all that after the tournament. That's not going to happen. Uh, it'll be to go. Uh, scoring, people typically like to hang around and, and watch how the scores are, are, are playing out, see how they've done. That'll be done electronically. There'll be a, a large screen TV outside uh, so people can see it from a distance. Uh, carts are, have always been an issue uh, since the pandemic. At Undermountain, at, at, uh, when, when uh, the approval to open courses came down, uh, people were only allowed to ride one per cart, one person per cart, so you didn't have two people side by side. Uh, over at Undermountain, uh, and, and courses address them differently, this issue, but Undermountain has a, a, a divider a plastic divider on the cart so two people can ride safely in the same carts. Um, and uh, and uh, they'll encourage people to use those. Uh, still uh, at issue will be things like um, trophy presentations, uh, raffles. Uh, those, are, uh, those are things that are very important 
of course, the trophies are important to the people who are playing because they're competing for trophies. Raffles are extremely important for in golf tournaments because that's one of the major fundraising components of a, of a, a golf tournament. But uh, again, we want, in the interest of keeping people distant and uh, not gathered, uh, raffles are, are, are a problem because people like to, to, to sit together and, and see who's winning what. Uh, those those issues uh, have yet to be uh, uh, ironed out, and things that concern golf t- uh, tournaments in general. Uh, th- those are the specific. Every one of those things is all meant to keep people distance. I mean, in addition, of course, the six foot rule holds the uh, wearing of masks whenever you're in somebody else's presence. That is always that's the overriding uh, uh, thing that we all still have to do. But in terms of, say, you're an organizer of a golf tournament and you're trying to figure out whether um, you can pull this off or not, uh, there are all these things that I've just talked about that, that need to be satisfied before you can safely do it. But other other concerns, like in golf tournaments, I think I mentioned this before, the average participant in a golf tournament is an older person as opposed to, say, a, a race, uh, you know, a 5K race or something like that. It tends to be the older people. Uh, and, uh, of course, they are at a higher risk of, of the virus. Um, another concern is um, our business sponsors. Uh, like raffles, the business sponsors are a major component of uh, a golf tournament success. Uh, they're, the, they're the businesses, the mom-and-pop ones, the bigger ones, uh, all kinds of businesses who buy um, uh, sponsorship signs that you see on the tees or dollars a piece or whatever in those are uh, in their aggregate they underwrite the expenses of the tournament well businesses are hurting this year i know uh in swasa if if we're able to pull off our tournament in september we're not going to solicit any uh businesses at all we, we just don't feel it's right to uh, they've been hurting as much of maybe not more than than other entities during this and we're just not going to um we're just not going to even address uh, getting business asking businesses for, for, for money. just can't. And one other thing about the, this year, um, SWASA, the, our golf, golf tournament, of course, is a fundraiser for SWASA, but this year we're going to uh, divide it between um, SWASA and the Jane Lloyd Fund because um, they've, they've uh, experienced so many cancellations. And uh, uh, We're all in this together, Marshall. I haven't heard that phrase in a while, but uh, we, we certainly are. Uh, all these... Nonprofits doing the best they can to keep doing what they do with lower revenue because of the events that they have canceled. Uh, again, the operative word is uncertainty. Even as I talk about all these possible tournaments that want to try to pull it off, um, uh, uh, a reversal in, in um, the pandemic, even, even though we've been doing well around here, should that change? Maybe uh, this will all go down the tubes again. Who knows? We just don't know. So the, the challenge for all these organizers is to make plans fully realizing that they might not, might not happen, depending on what happens. So, um, yeah. well, well, you look at this, everything from what you've been talking about. Uh, we normally sponsor five golf tournaments a year. It's about 350 to $400 a tournament, depending upon how many people are in it. So the company I, I work with, okay, that's $2,000 just from us. Just from us, yeah. uh, out of, out of that. Yeah. Um, you By the look, way, you're very good to Swasa. Our, yeah. our, our tournament's one of the ones you, you sponsor. And we're, we're but but you them. you also look at like the restaurants. Uh, not only the people who work at the restaurants, but the food providers, the liquor providers, the the uh, the linen providers. I mean, you look at you look at the golf tournaments. You're right. Golf tournaments are 99 percent golfers getting together and having a great time. Yeah. And yeah, the golfing ties it all together. But it's the razzing and it's the camaraderie. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. and that, all that's gone. Yeah. Uh, and one one other factor uh, change that I that I didn't address. Is the uh, the number of people they're going to allow into a tournament? You know, of course, you want to get as many golfers into a tournament as you can uh, within reason, and uh, you don't want to overbook a, a tournament because you don't want the play to be so slow that you have so many foursomes in there that uh, everybody's just barely budging along. Uh, but it's going to be just the opposite now at a at a place like Undermountain, for example. It's a nine-hole course. Uh, there's a challenge in playing an 18-hole tournament on a nine-hole course, but what they're going to have to do. Like a typical Swasa tournament, we'll, we'll, we would have 60 uh, participants. That's about the most we could have there uh, and have things move along. It'll be 36 
now. Right. And what they may do is uh, add a second flight, so that they're in effect two nine hole tur- two eighteen hole tournaments, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, so you can double that. But uh, again, with the idea of keeping people apart and not getting too many people in the same place at the same same time, that's uh, that's the the overriding concern. So if if we can pull these tournaments off, and and as we're moving along, I don't see why we can't. They're all just going to have a different look. All right, Willie, uh, we will speak to you again and see how things are progressing or not progressing. Okay, Marshall, have a good week. Thanks, as always, for having me on. All right, take care, Willie. Bye. Willie Hallahan, Sporting a Cause, sportingacause.com on the web.